we return to our coverage of the Senate Governmental Affairs Subcommittee on Investigations as members hear testimony on U.S. handling of communist bloc defectors. The subcommittee will come to order. As we've said on many occasions, we swear in all the witnesses before this subcommittee. Senator Humphrey, we're delighted to have you. If you'll take the oath here, do you swear the testimony you give before the subcommittee will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so happy God. I do. Thank I agree with your statement, Mr. Chairman, that we must learn to better assist and utilize the genuine defector who usually arrives at our doorstep in his flight for freedom with nothing more than the shirt on his back. We have not done enough in this country. That we are not doing enough was never more evident than in the case of Miroslav Medved, and it's worth noting in connection with this hearing that the report of the investigation, which the Helsinki Commission conducted, found that not only were laws violated by minor officials, but laws were violated by officials at the highest levels of our government in connection with that case. However, the matter on which I wish to focus this morning is our effort, or perhaps I should say non-effort, with regards to Soviet defectors from the army in Afghanistan. The administration's policy on Afghanistan was outlined in the State Department's latest annual assessment of the situation in Af Afghanistan to wit it is clear that only steadily increasing pressure on all fronts, military, political, diplomatic, will induce the Soviets to make the political decision to negotiate the withdrawal of their forces." Close quote. Surely a powerful way to bring pressure to bear on the Soviet Union is through an active program to accommodate defectors from the Soviet Army in Afghanistan. We have failed miserably and abjectly in this regard. Let me outline three major reasons why we should increase our effort. First, it is an issue of humanitarian importance. The war in Afghanistan has brought untold suffering to the people of that country. At the same time, the war has also been a tragedy for those young men who are sent to fight in Afghanistan. How deeply dis disturbing it must be for young Soviet soldiers to be forced by their government to wage a brutal, indeed genocidal, war against an innocent civilian population. An estimated several hundred such Soviet soldiers have joined the Afghan resistance. Many have requested asylum in the West, yet only a handful, a pitiful handful, have been accommodated. Humphrey, we have a good many of them that are fighting with the Afghanistan res resistance. That is correct. An estimated several hundred. Secondly, such a policy could significantly undermine the morale of the Soviet Army and hasten the day when the Soviets will be truly willing to withdraw under conditions of a just peace. There is no question that the Soviets are taking a substantial beating in Afghanistan, and increasingly so. Two years ago, the Afghan resistance was in serious jeopardy. Today, the situation is dramatically reversed. Soviets no longer enjoy air superiority that once permitted them to devastate resistance bases and supply lines. And this past summer, the resistance scored a series of impressive military victories, not only against the puppet forces, but indeed against Spetsnaz units of the Red Army. The cost to the Soviets in lives and rubles for their occupation of Afghanistan has soared. We've heard reports for years that morale among Soviet soldiers in Afghanistan is low and that many of the soldiers resort to drugs. Imagine the effect if Soviet soldiers learned they simply had to cross over to the resistance in order to achieve political asylum in the West. Thirdly, such a policy could greatly increase international awareness of a war that, for the most part, has been hidden from the world. The few Soviet defectors that have left Afghanistan have provided invaluable information about Soviet policies and tactics in this war. Moreover, the Voice of America, Radio Free Afghanistan, and Radio Liberty 
could all carry routine interviews with Soviet defectors. Yesterday, Mr. Chairman, one such defector, Nikolai Movchan, a Soviet soldier who joined the Afghan resistance and was granted asylum in the United States, testified before the Congressional Task Force on Afghanistan. His testimony provided important insights into the strain Soviet barbarities against Afghan civilians has placed on the conscience of the individual Soviet soldier. An extraordinary woman named Ludmilla Thorne of the organization Freedom House in New York has single-handedly led the way on the issue of asylum for Soviet soldiers defecting in Afghanistan. She has traveled inside Afghanistan on four separate occasions and has interviewed 22 Soviet prisoners of war. Nine of the Soviet defectors that have been brought to, their wet, to the West owe their freedom to the dedication and perseverance of Ms. Thorne. Were it not for she, we would have no information about Soviet soldiers wanting to come to the West. In May of last year, Mr. Chairman, I personally visited with President Reagan and discussed this issue. During the meeting, I handed the President five letters addressed to him by name from Soviet soldiers seeking asylum in, West, in the West. These are letters which were brought out uh, by Ludmilla Thorne and entrusted to me and which I in turn gave to the President. I might add that he took a great personal interest in these cases and as a result of his interest, uh, those soldiers are now, uh, were extracted from Afghanistan and now are enjoying asylum in Canada. Despite the pressing humanitarian need, despite the valuable strategic opportunity to shorten the war, I regret to say the administration has no program whatever to accommodate Soviet defectors from the Afghan war. Only six have been accommodated in the United States, the last in 1984, four years ago, three years ago. The few efforts that have been made have been ad hoc and sporadic resulting from extraordinary stimuli, such as the meeting I had with President Reagan. Were it not for determined activists like Ludmilla Thorne, this issue would have been entirely ignored by the executive branch. There is no one in charge of this matter within our government. No agency or department has the lead. And so I urge the subcommittee to examine the tragic failure of the administration in the important area of Soviet defectors in Afghanistan. And I urge the committee to recommend the administration place someone in charge and to develop an aggressive program to accommodate defections from Soviet forces in Afghanistan. Finally, Mr. Chairman, I would ask that uh, you include in the record uh, two uh, news articles about two individual Soviet defectors who uh, testified before the Congressional Task Force on Afghanistan, one this past July and one just yesterday. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Humphrey. We might also call to your attention, we have put a series of exhibits in the record this morning, and one of the exhibits was this information from Ludmilla Thorne good. Uh, and a statement from her. Excellent. And we also uh, have a good bit of uh, information here that I'm sure you're familiar yes. with on this. Yes. I had not realized the... the um, that there were Soviet soldiers actually fighting on the side of the Mujahideen now. Do you know whether those are, um, those defections have anything to do with religion? Are they brother Muslims or is this independent of religion? I think the common thread is, is, is moral objection to what the Soviet forces are doing in Afghanistan. I, I don't know for sure about the religion of the uh, Soldiers, I do know that with respect to nationality, Mr. Movchan, who testified before the Congressional Task Force, force yesterday, is, is, a, is a Ukrainian. Um, and so it isn't just a case of soldiers from the Muslim republics of the Soviet Union, but uh, I think it's a, it's, it's a pretty diverse and representative cross-section who, who are t going over to the side of the insurgents. Do you know whether the their when they do defect, when Soviet soldiers do defect, are they received uh, with hostility or with hospitality by the Mujahideen, or does it vary group to group? Information is hard to come by, of course, reliable information. I, I think the reception varies from group to group and, and uh, depends uh, 
substantially on the resources of, of, of the receiving unit, military unit. If, if they're short on food, as they often are, then it, it's, it's a real problem. Uh, therefore, it is all the more important that we make it clear through our policy and our action to these uh, resistance units that uh, we will accommodate those who wish asylum and therefore uh, these defectors will be no burden on them in terms of upkeep. Could uh, international organizations play a role here like the Red Cross? I'm just not in a position to say there are some political sensitivities and the more that these, uh, these um, matters are, are dealt with discreetly, the better, especially the, the uh, removal of these people through uh, friendly countries, third countries. And you're saying right now that there's no agency in our government who really f has jurisdiction over this, as best you can tell. Well, I've been deeply immersed in this Afghanistan issue for three years, and, and as a general uh, statement, there's nobody in, there's no clear authority. There's nobody really in charge. There is no high-level person in our executive government that uh, that has uh, full-time responsibility in this area. Authority and responsibility is pretty di diverse and distributed throughout the agencies. Uh, with respect to prisoners of war, I'm not aware that there is any anyone in charge. But what I can say with assurance is that there is no there is no ongoing effort. There is no ongoing program. What little effort we have made in past years has been ad hoc and sporadic. Do you have any recommendations as to which agency should be in charge of this kind of both problem and opportunity? I, I have no such recommendations. My recommendation is that we have a program, an aggressive program, with someone in charge who works full time and that we make a maximum effort along these lines. Senator Humphrey, we thank you very much for being here. Thank you for your testimony will be very helpful. We'll try to follow up on it. We'll try to stay in touch with you and your staff. Also, of course, I thank you for your continued good service on the Armed Services Committee. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. May I just say finally that uh, Ms. Thorne was at the White House this morning discussing uh, several more cases of Soviet soldiers in, in the hands of the resistance who have asked for asylum in this country. These are requests of considerably long standing about which nothing has been done as far as I can tell. And uh, the point I want to make... That's a State Department judgment, isn't it? I think you're right in that. But there is, there is a generic systemic problem in the executive about what to do in these matters. And as a result, nothing is being done. And the, the point I wanted to make with regards to Mrs. Th Ms. Thorne's visit to the White House today is that she knows of several more soldiers by name who are in the hands of known units who have agreed to release these men, and yet nothing is being done about it. Thank you. Well, I think, I think we need to take a look at this, and we appreciate you bringing it to our attention.